You can see these arborizing vessels, but also some additional clues, many milialized, all talking about an irritated SEPK. The other vascular pattern that we need to know in pink lesions are red lacunes. Red lacunes are characteristic of hemangiomas. As we can see in this clinical hemangioma and dermoscopy hemangioma, red lacunes. Or in this other lesion, red lacunes. Or in this other dark lesion that we'll send to our unit thinking about melanoma, but it was easy for us to see even clinically, but much better with thermoscopy, that it is just an angiokeratoma. And in angiokeratoma, we have another clue, is the presence of dark lacunes. Very well delimited dark lacunes. We had the opportunity to describe the patterns that could be present in these angiokeratomas, and these patterns are quite specific of angiokeratoma. We need to remember these two patterns characteristic of benign vascular lesions, angiomas, and angiokeratomas. But remember, be careful the melanoma, nodular melanoma that Dr. Malvey showed to you, in which a lesion that may mimic lacunes, but they are not really lacunes because they are not well defined. And also, we can see very thin vessels inside these structures. In fact, it is a milky red areas with irregular vessels out of focus because these vessels are very deep in these very thick melanomas because these, they are out of focus. And these vessels are talking about melanoma, remember. We have another type of linear vessels that we can see around at the periphery of a lesion. And these crown vessels may be seen at least in two different conditions. The first one is this lesion with this dermoscopy. Do you know what it is? Molluscum contagiosum. Okay, why? Because we have these vessels and at this, in the center, this polymor amorphous material that corresponds to amorphous material in the center of molluscum contagiosum. You can see here better. And it is a schematic of this molluscum contagiosum. Another very thick and large molluscum contagiosum with some crown vessels at the periphery and this amorphous material in the center. And sebaceous hyperplasia may be similar but a little bit different because we will see the ostium of the gland and also we will see the gland. But it is a little bit different. We can see the ostium, the crown vessels and the gland. More whitish around. And what is this? Here in Italy, I'm sure all of you are thinking about the spits. But it is dermoscopy. Is it the spits dermoscopy? No, or it is. Leishmania, very good. Cutaneous leishmania. And why? Because you have here these whitish, yellowish tears and vessels and erythema. You can see better these yellowish tears, characteristic of leishmania, cutaneous leishmania, and the histology of this case. Another example of another leishmania, cutaneous leishmania. Again, with this, and another example, again, with these whitish, yellowish tears, erythema and vessels. We had the opportunity to review a series of cutaneous leishmaniosis, and we described the patterns that are more frequently seen, but the most characteristic pattern is this one, these yellowish tears, vessels, and erythema. But sometimes we can see another pattern with a central ulceration and a whitish star bar pattern. Now to finish, I'm out of time, but just to show you the four, four last cases very fast. Clinical picture, what do you think? It could be everything. Dermoscopy, what do you think? Do you see chrysalids? 
and dotted vessels, melanoma. Easy. It's true, it's histology. It's true. Another one, another pink lesion. A little bit more easy. It's another insight to melanoma, a little bit more advanced. Clear, shiny streaks and vessels. And this one, melanoma. And again, in these lesions with confocal, we can see the cells. But what happens when we don't see the tumor, the first, the second, the third visit? Then it's easier to recognize melanoma. Now we have more criteria. And now it's clear, it is a melanoma. But it is an invasive melanoma. Then, in conclusion, in non-pigmented lesion, it's very important to take into account clinical aspects, morphology of the vessels, and architectural aspects. And we have five clues. First clue, we need to know genetic background. Be careful with red hair patients. Be careful with albino patients. Lesion may don't have pigment. Second clue, remember, an specific pattern associated with remnants of pigmentation and polymorphous vessels is talking about melanoma. Third clue, vascular morphology. It's very important. And we know that the morphology of melanoma are dotted vessels, milky red areas, and linear irregular vessels, polymorphous vessels. But also for nodular melanoma, we need to remember this angioma-like pattern with vessels inside and corcus group for metastasis. Fourth clue, distribution and association of the vessels. And in melanoma, many times vessels are predominantly in the center with a scar like the pigmentation or chrysalids and blue white veil. And finally, for those of you that you may use confocal microscopy, non pigmented melanoma, it's also reflectant, reflectant for confocal, and we can see perfectly well these type of melanomas. And just to finish, I would like to invite to you if you have an iPhone, to download this program that is a dermoscopy tutorial. It's a very easy one with many schematics and many cases. Probably too much easy for you, but it could be useful for your residents or for your students, and it's just for free. Thank you very much for your attention. Bravissima. Bene, insomma, ci sono varie aree di, di lesioni difficili. C'è una domanda al volo per Susanna e poi facciamo un punto della situazione. In effetti, facendo un punto della situazione, effettivamente ci sono un po' di aree difficili, dobbiamo dircelo. Secondo me, le due aree veramente difficili dove ci confrontiamo e dove possiamo fare errori ancora oggi sono le lesioni del volto e le lesioni rosse e, e quindi eh, dobbiamo ve effettivamente vedere più cose, Susanna ci ha fatto vedere un sacco di cose, eh, più vediamo e più abituiamo il nostro occhio a riconoscere questi pattern molto sottili che però ci, ci salvano la vita e soprattutto la salvano i nostri pazienti ovviamente, um, eh, quindi più vediamo e meglio è. Eh, è chiaro che è ancora un ambito, un ambito complesso e restano questi due punti nodali. Forse, eh, se vogliamo, eh, i due, i due, i, le due aree anche un po' difficili, che sono le lesioni piccole e le lesioni nodulari, tutto sommato, da un punto di vista di gestione, sappiamo come approcciarle, no? Quindi abbiamo detto, è una piccola... L'importante, ad esempio, nelle lesioni piccole, l'unica cosa importante è guardarle perché se non le guardiamo è evidente che possiamo perdere un piccolo melanoma. Quindi, ma una volta guardata la lesione piccola, la lesione piccola è difficile che ci sfugga, casomai possiamo asportare una piccola lesione in più, che certe volte eh, può, può sembrare un melanoma e non lo è, cioè al limite possiamo peccare in eccesso, ma è difficile che pecchiamo in difetto. E per le lesioni nodulari, devo dire anche qui, secondo me la, la, eh, la problematica non è così eh, importante, non rischiamo di perdere grosse cose, perché una lesione nodulare è, è appariscente, si fa guardare, 
per carità la lesione nodulare rossa e quindi rientriamo nel discorso del rosso è, è difficile ma la lesione nodulare eh, pigmentata è difficile che la perdiamo quindi eh, insomma eh, credo che per, le, per quanto riguarda le lesioni nodulari siamo abbastanza eh, abbastanza tranquilli eh, e ci poniamo ovviamente sempre una sola e unica regola quella di non fare un follow up se non siamo <ride> convinti di che cosa sia la lesione nodulare Uh, grazie Susanna. Grazie I, mille. I thank you very much. Thank you.